Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. Aquaman is coming out December 21st in America, but it's already making money outside internationally, and I get to watch it this Saturday. So I'm really stoked to see that. But in the meantime, making big bucks in China. I mean, what? It's like it's uh, in the seven days uh, that has been released. It has made over a hundred and thirty-five million dollars in the Chinese box office, surpassing every single DC film and five MCU films so far. Uh, it, it beat Doctor Strange, which was only uh, ended up at one hundred and nine. Thor Ragnarok one hundred and twelve. Captain America: The Winter Soldier one hundred and fifteen. Uh, even X Men: Days of Future Past was one hundred and sixteen. Spider Man: Homecoming one hundred and sixteen. X Men: Apocalypse one hundred and twenty. Ant Man and the Wasp one hundred and twenty one. Uh, Iron Man three one hundred and twenty two. So it beat uh, well, it beat MC movies and Marvel movies. But uh, the next thing it could possibly be is Captain America Civil War which is 180 as uh, analysts had said that by uh, next this week or coming uh, by next week it could uh, overtake by 180 million dollars in the box office uh, that is a ginormous incredible incredible stuff um, and it, it's it's very interesting to see China very uh, actually look really enjoying things like Venom and Aquaman these two origin type films right now of superhero films right now and that is a phenomenon for the studio uh, great word of mouth uh, and people love it there uh, I'm hearing everybody I know so far in this uh, DC fans and, and Snyder fans have seemed to love it so far and so I really I'm really stoked to see it uh, I heard that first uh, one of the bits from the Rupert Gregson Williams score of Aquaman and I'm like oh oh this this sounds great uh, this sounds great so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it uh, Aquaman is kicking but it's is he's 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 going to premieres doing the haka dance and stuff like that it's awesome uh and he's getting a lot of support from ray fisher who who went to the premiere to check him out and that's awesome a lot of cool great love there uh and and it, i can't be any more happy for him and he seems so to be filled with so much gratitude to be uh um actually being in that spotlight and he's he's so excited and happy jason momoa such an awesome guy and, and the whole cool thing too uh, in regards to Jason is that um, you know how he's talked about the Snyder Cut he just came out and said he wants to see it too uh, he actually put the name Snyder Cut out in the open um, well he squashed a an, an rumor um, that Henry Cavill was not was going to be out as Superman and he told E.T. live right then. He says, no, absolutely not. Harry Cavill's Superman. He's he's still going to be Superman. He he loves that. Um, and I think he talked to Henry Cavill. I think that's what one of the tweets said. And he said he's absolutely going to be Superman. No, 100%. So, uh, so that is awesome to hear that. I love it that Henry Cavill, according to uh, Jason Momoa, is still going to be Superman. And it came from him. And it seems so. he was so serious, don't you think? when you watch that video he seems so serious and sincere that uh, Harry Cavill is definitely not going anywhere he's definitely going to be superman uh and uh and uh, and not going to be quitting anytime soon so i'm really stoked to see that to hear about that it's very different because didn't he just do an interview like last week or something saying that uh if henry cavill and ben affleck chose to leave you know i understand and stuff like that but and but in this case he feels so certain so sincere that it's still happening that Harry Cavill is still Superman. I gotta wonder if something is going on in the background, uh, tinfoil hat, if you will, um, and making him as he's being a, this is his, he's the big celebrity for Warner Brothers right now. He is the star for DC right now. That uh, maybe something's happening, and Warner Brothers Studios are like. 
I think this is it. I think we've finally turned it around. Uh, we're we're going to come back now. We're going to come back with it. We're going to be confident in our, uh, our creators. We're going to be confident in our actors and actresses. Um, and maybe, maybe something's happening. I hope so. I really hope that um, that something is truly happening with that. And what what's amazing is that uh, he continues to really praise Zack Snyder, and I love that. I, he he won't let Warner Brothers forget. He won't let anybody forget where he came from, how he got the job, and who everyone should be thanking for for the creating this DCEU. Even uh, you know Gal Gadot had coined it DCEU, including Zachary Levi. Everybody has been pretty much coined it DCEU. You and Zack Snyder was its creator. Uh, this is his legacy. That's why it keeps going on, and I love that. Um, it's not rebooting. It's not anything like that. It's not soft rebooting. Uh, according to, um, I haven't seen the movie yet, but it has that connection that could fit well in the Snyderverse, which I love. Um, and you know, it, it's probably not part of that five-part arc, but that's okay. Uh, and so uh, we continue to see that Zack Snyder's uh, is still intertwined in the credits. It's executive produced uh, by Zack Snyder and Deborah Snyder. But the the interesting one is that Wonder Woman 1984. It's not executive producer, producer. It's produced, meaning he has more hands-on than in this movie. And uh, and it's great to see that he's still out there uh, promoting in a way uh, uh, when he can with the storyboards for Justice League. And um, it's cool to him see interact with fans on Vero as well. As you can kind of see, Thiago Cassell, uh, Caselli had put up this picture of a toy of Superman and Doomsday. And it's from a Justice League collection. And of course, yes, we do see weird toys. Uh, toys like Lex Luthor's suit and things like that things that you don't even see in the movies it happens all the time not only in DC but Marvel anything really uh, so it nothing to really glance at but but he he puts up something interesting where he captions his JL intro flashback or Lois's dream or maybe Bruce's having bad dreams and you know hmm and so uh, Zack Snyder liked it so he liked that picture um, I'm not sure if he liked it because he saw the picture um, but we are to expect that the maybe the beginning of the movie uh, just like how Batman v Superman began with a sort of a different point of view of the ending battle of Man of Steel how about we have a different point of view of the ending Batman v Superman fight and this time from Lois Lane right so what if this is the part where we see in the trailer where she wakes up in bed and she looks at a picture she wakes up from a nightmare of seeing, seeing her dearly beloved killed once again uh, by doomsday and it would have been such an emotional feeling of loss but no instead we get some effed up superman's lip uh talking about losing his, his car keys and shit like that and that and that that just totally takes you out of it all that emotional um despair and the connection between the film from before so you know that sucked but this would have been cool to have Lois wake up from a nightmare and then she gets up in the morning. It's all slow. Maybe the recap a little bit. Uh, I can imagine her getting her coffee and then going to Heroes, uh, the Heroes Park. And I could totally see all that happening. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not what we got, right? But maybe things are turning around. Maybe something is happening within the DCEU uh, in terms of of the players involved. We know uh, Jeff Johns is gone. Um, he's doing his own thing on the DC Universe streaming. It's kind of like Warner Brothers said, you know, for all the things that you've done, here you go. Uh, you can play in this world and will not bother you too much um, and while in, in the DCEU we've got um, Jim Lee taking over his position and Jim Lee has always been pretty much a, a 
for Man of Steel. He praised Man of Steel. He praised Zack Snyder's take on the Superman lore. Um, him coupled with Walter Hamada um, and maybe even James Wan, who who we've heard helped get Walter Hamada back on the team, uh, back on the team because he was from New Line Cinema, and. Uh, and you see now, just recently, Zack Snyder told everybody on Barrel to kind of follow Jim Lee. And he says, the best. Just out of the blue. Jim Lee has not posted a thing on Vero and he just said the best. And we know he's into the finishing line, tinfoil hat of his office. No, it is his office. But maybe it's something else. But who knows. But anyway, it's interesting that he wanted us to follow uh, or say that Jim Lee's the best, right? And you're like, okay, that's cool. But well, he's, you know, the, what was he, the chief content creator officer of DC Entertainment. Um, and, you know, that is great. That means maybe it's possible that he went to Zack Snyder and says, hey, um, we might have something else for you. And you could be like, well, that's not Warner Brothers, right? You could be thinking that. And I was thinking that too a little bit, but if you think about it a little further, look what Jeff Johns had done. All the unraveling he was able to accomplish with that same job title. He was chief content creator officer of DC Entertainment, but he had a lot of hand to do with what happened in uh, Justice League, uh, Suicide Squad, uh, I think parts of Wonder Woman, uh, even parts of Aquaman, you know, all the things that he was involved in before he was uh, uh, not really, well, I still think he was let go in a nice way. But um, he, look at all Jeff Johns was accomplished with that job title. Now you take Jeff Johns out of the equation, Jim Lee into the title, who we known so far to have been a Zack Snyder promoter. Uh, he has went on uh, public seats, said that Zack Snyder wasn't fired. Um, he's, he liked uh, Zack Snyder's take. And now Zack Snyder is telling us out of the blue that he's the best. The best at, for what? what do you have in mind what are we what are we doing here why is the director who is supposedly no longer working for any uh, dc property he's totally out of warner brothers supposedly all of a sudden uh connected with jim lee the chief content creative officer for dc entertainment the same position that jeff johns is i don't know but get the tin foil truck and then maybe it will start to make a little more sense. Hopefully. All right, guys. Well, that is it for tonight. Um, I just want to put one little thing in there. I think Mick D and uh, a bunch of other people are putting together uh, a, a Jason Momoa tribute just to thank him and things like that and feel, say a few words for him. Uh, I'm going to find a, a nice, cool-looking place in Hawaii to do that little snippet of video and send that over. Um, but um, I'll put you know make these contact below i think he's the one in charge of this um and maybe if you want to help out put it it's it's the same to tribute video for like henry cavill uh well not here we go uh, for ben affleck should we do it for henry cavill I don't know, but uh, for Ben Affleck, and we did the same for Fiona, and so I think this is kind of cool uh, that it, it kind of gets us together and see our faces and see how much support is out there that uh, knowing that you're not alone, uh, we're all in this together. Uh, so I think that's a great thing. We're all, I'm a huge fan as myself, and we're, I'm just, we're just all huge fans together. All right, guys, well, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.